God has promotion for you. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, there's a season of promotion that's coming to you. It might not come when you want it to come. But promotion's coming. Amen. And I want to be around Neil when it comes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like to be around when promotion comes. Amen, Jada? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God is good. All the time. If you would look with me, please, at James chapter 4. Look at verse number 8. James 4, 8. Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. I want you to look. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. This morning, you have as much God as you want. <coughs> Did you know that? Where you are at spiritually right now in your spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, you have as much of God as you already want. Somebody says, I want more of God. You can have more of God. Matter of fact, let me word it this way. You can have as much of God as you want. The ball is in your hands. There are some people that have so much of God, when you get around them, the Holy Ghost gets on you, Amen. off of them. It slops over on you. <laughs> I've been in a lady's home that went to another church in Pearl, Mississippi. She was in her 80s. Diane, you know her, who I'm talking about. That's going to be with the Lord now. But when I was in her house, I mean, it felt like the presence of God was there in that living room. Amen. And I wanted her to pray for me. You prayed for me. Why? Because she was so full of God. You can have as much of God as you want. It's up to you. Amen. There are some people, they have so much of God. I mean, they have experiences in God. But I, will, I want to say one more time. Right now, where you're at in your spiritual walk with God, you have as much as you want, but you can't have more. The Bible says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. The closer you get to God, the closer He becomes to you. Amen. Amen. You can have more of it. You can. Hallelujah. Feed upon the Word of God. Pray and worship Him till He becomes so close to you that when you wake up in the middle of the night as we was talking earlier in Sunday school, you will be more conscious of His presence than you are uh, your mate beside you. Now, as I heard one man say years ago, he said it didn't come overnight. But he said, I can wake up in the middle of the night be more close be more conscious of God's presence than I am my wife's right beside me. <clears throat> draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Amen. You can have as much of God as you want. Some people want more of God. Jesus said, blessed are they, are, are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you hunger and thirst after God, you're going to be filled with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So I want us to endeavor to, glow, to grow closer to God more than ever in this time. Amen. Amen. Now, if you would go with me to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, real quickly. A few books back. And look at chapter 4. Beginning with verse number 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good to see you this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Let the word of God minister unto you. <laughs> 
For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Now, the Word of God tells us bodily exercise profiteth little. Now, you and I on the earth, when we exercise our body, the Word of God says not only profits a little bit, it only profits for the physical. But the Word of God tells us, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, And of that which is to come. Many times when we think about serving God. Now stay with me for a moment. I used to think this as a, as a teenager. I used to think. Well going to church. Living for Jesus. The only thing you get out of it is going to heaven. Pays off in the next life. Well, that's true. The life to come. Godliness is profitable for the life to come. I used to think if I served the Lord Jesus Christ, it was going to be boring. There wasn't no fun in it. No, you can have fun in serving Jesus. Matter of fact, I have the best fun now that I've ever had in my entire life. Amen. He gives me peace. I thought I had fun in the bars and pool halls playing with some of the best nine ball players in the world years ago and being in the Matt Pool and Billiards magazine and I've been in Billiards Digest and been on TV. But that was nothing compared to the fun that I have now. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is great. I have a joyous time serving Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice something at this verse of Scripture. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is. When you serve God now in this life, it is profitable for you. It is profitable for, for you and I. Serving God pays off, this scripture tells me, and having promise of the life that now is. When you and I exercise ourselves unto godliness, it benefits you now. Yeah. Amen. There's been people that if they, would, if they weren't serving the Lord in the past, destruction would have came to them. Come on. Daniel's one of them that was in the lion's den. He served God. You know the story. We won't go by uh, for time's sake and turn to it. But you know, they made a law in Daniel's day that you could not pray to any God, ask anything of any man or God for 30 days except of the king. You know why they, they passed the law, made that law? is because they were jealous of Daniel. But what did Daniel do? He knelt three times a day, Amen. morning, noon, and evening, with his windows open, and they spied on him, Pam. <laughs> they went back and told the king what he was doing. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and they made it seem bad. Daniel regards not you, king. He makes his petition three times a day. You know what? Godliness is profitable. Yeah. It paid off in Daniel's life. <laughs> Don't compromise your belief. I'm not. Somebody says, Brother Dennis, I've had somebody tell me not too long ago, they don't like you. Well, I'm still serving Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I'm still loving them. That's the difference between a child of God and a religious person. Amen. Daniel served his God, and because he served his God... You know, because of the law, he was thrown into the lion's den. Some of you might right now, some of you in here, you might feel like you're in a lion's den. Where's God at? God, I'm being thrown in the lion's den. Where are you at? He's there. He hasn't forsaken you. 
He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Believe the word of God. Well, Daniel, a righteous man, one that exercised himself unto godliness. Listen, if you serve the Lord in this life, it will pay off for you. Amen. Amen. But don't compromise. Don't get around friends and say, and then change. No, you serve God around them like you would by yourself or in church. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Preach it now. Don't be fake. God knows what you're like when you're by yourself, when you're in church, or when you're around your friends. That's right. Amen. 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 Your, your life should be pleasing unto the Lord. That's right. Well, Daniel's was. He didn't close his windows. <laughs> windows. <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> no, he kept his windows open, didn't he? He didn't close his windows and close the curtains behind it. You cannot hide your Christianity. Jesus said, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You are the light of the world. The only Christ that many people are going to see is the Christ that's in you. You know why some people don't even come to church in some places? Is because they saw people that claim to be Christians live like the devil. Amen. Amen. They say, "What? Well, I need to go to church. Look how you live." Amen. Preach it now. Jesus said, "Let your light so shine." Daniel let his light so shine, even when a law was made, whether it was life or death. Now, listen to me. This has not happened to you and I. What about a law was passed that you and I could not pray unto the Lord? It happened before right. in Daniel's day for 30 days. No man was to ask any petition of a man or a God except of the king. But Daniel, he was going to serve his God regardless. Yes. Remember my text, for bodily exercise profiteth little. Man, when people work out on this earth, great. Not only profit. Profits you physically. Yes. But that cannot keep you from destruction. Bodily exercise cannot protect you from harm. You're not bigger than the devil when it comes to physical strength, is what I'm saying. Spiritually, with Jesus living in you, you are. Yes. Amen. <laughs> But if you think you're going to take on the devil physically by, by physical exercise, you're wrong. But with Jesus in you, you can. Right. Bodily exercise pro only profits the one that is working out. But bodily exercise cannot keep you from destruction. But godliness can. Did I make myself clear enough? Amen. In other words... Daniel served God in godliness. And what happened? Well, they threw him into the lion's den. They gave him the death sentence. Jason. Daniel's cast into the lion's den, man. With no weapons except one that he looked to, and that was the God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of all the earth. Yeah. And the lions, the Bible says that God shut the lion's mouth. No harm befell Daniel. Why? Because godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is. I want to serve. Listen, I need God more in this life than I do in the next. Amen. 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 There is no harm in heaven. That's right. There is no sickness in heaven. Amen. There is no destruction in heaven. Amen. I need God more in this life than I do the next. That's right. You see how the enemy trips us up? Thinking that we don't need God, that 
You can do your thing. You've got plenty of time. You know why he tells you that? Where he can devour you. Where you astray stray away from God. If Daniel would have strayed away from God, the lions would have had a mastery of him. Godliness is profitable unto all things, having promised the day of the life that now is. It pays off for you and I to serve God in this life. Now listen, I'm more concerned about this life than I am about heaven. Somebody says, why? Because I live now in this life. I'm not in heaven. Amen. So I'm more concerned about this life, the life in which I now live, instead of heaven. I plan on being in heaven one day, but I'm in this world now. I need Jesus Christ in this life. Amen. Amen. What would prevent you from serving him now? There's been there's multitudes. Listen to me, and I do not exaggerate. There's multitudes that would have been spared if they would have served the Lord. Amen. There's multitudes that would have still been alive if they had knowledge of Jesus. See how the enemy works. It benefits you to serve the Lord. It benefits me to serve the Lord. I need Him in this earth, in this world. Amen. Amen. Before we leave this verse of Scripture, look at it one more time in 1 Timothy 4.8. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable. Look at that. But godliness is profitable. It profits you unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Be not weary. Be not weary in serving God. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Amen. God has a miracle for you. Yes. <coughs> You've seen the goodness of the Lord. Yes. You've seen what God can do and will do. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Serve Him. It pays off to serve Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, there was a young man by the name of Joseph, a teenager. Seventeen years young. Let's just turn. Go with me to uh, Genesis real quickly. Go to Genesis chapter 37. Hallelujah. It pays off to serve the Lord. Yes. Somebody says, Oh, I don't want to go to church. Why? It should be joyous unto you. Amen. 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 I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's right. Well, I'm around you. I'm around like precious faith. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you. We need one another. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. Look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 through 5. Many of you know about the story of Joseph. Did it pay off for him in his life to serve the Lord? Godliness is profitable. Did it pay off for this young teenager <coughs> to serve God in godliness? Look at verse 3. And Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers... Brethren, brothers, saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Now God has a plan for Joseph. 
But Joseph still had a free will, just like you and I. You can choose to serve God or not. Amen. If God wants to do something for a people, he has a man that he wants to work through, but if not, he can, he'll have to, he can choose someone else. He's God. Yeah. Amen, do I? You got to be careful who you tell your dream to sometimes. Amen. Not everyone's excited like you are. Come on. Amen. 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 Joseph had a dream. This young teenager, man, he, life, listen to me, life was going good for him. Life was going, I mean, his dad made him a coat of many colors. He dreamed a dream. He was, he was happy about his dream. He shared his dream with his brothers. They hated him. Shared his dream with his daddy. Turn over and look at verse 18. God is with you. And even though circumstances change or may change, continue to serve Him in godliness. Because you need Him more than ever at that moment. Amen. That ain't the time when you run from God. That's the time when you draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. Amen. Look at Joseph's life here in verse 18 of chapter 37 of Genesis. And when they saw Him afar off, even before He came near to them, they conspired against Him to slay Him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. They hated Joseph so much as he, they was willing to kill him. Wow, what hate. But Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was coming to his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery, and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. If Joseph didn't have the heart that he had toward God, his brothers probably would have slain him. But because he served God in a pure heart, godliness paid off. Now you thinking, how did it pay off? Well, he was sold to the Ishmaelites instead of being killed. And yet, God is working in Joseph's life at this moment. But Joseph would have never saw it. See, when you think God is not working in your life, listen to me. He is working. Joseph didn't see the hand of God. Joseph is being taken away from his dad. He sold to the Ishmaelites. If you would have asked Joseph at that time, is God with you? 
There's no telling what you would have heard from him. But yet God was with him. Because of Joseph's heart, and I'm going to show you his heart here in a moment. Godliness paid off for him. His life was spared. Godliness is profitable. Ray, godliness is profitable. Rita, godliness is profitable. It pays off in this life. Stay close. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Are you here? Amen. Amen. This benefits you. You need God. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. Man can't help me. But Jesus can. Amen. Man has said no to me. But Jesus said I accept you. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn over to chapter 39. We're talking about draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You have as much of God as you want. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness pays off. Serving God pays off for you in this life. Yes. Amen. There's been times that the enemy would have took me out. But because I served God, I was spared. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1 of chapter 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was what? And the Lord was what? You would think, and Joseph would probably be thinking at this time, he's away from his homeland. He's away from his family. Where's God? But the Bible says God was right with him. Yeah. This 17 years of age, taken from his parents, taken from his brethren. Could you imagine the fear that, that he had in another country, didn't know what to expect? But he had God. Is there anybody in here that has faced something like this? Where you were taken away from your family? Against your will? And you were nearly grown? And you were taken somewhere that you did not want to go? But yet God was with you? And God had a, has a plan for you? Trust the Lord wherever you may be in life. Life's going to throw you some curveballs. Life's going to throw you some things that you weren't expecting to see. Right. It's coming. You live in this world. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Joseph. Look at Daniel. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at David. Open the Bible and look at great men that God blessed what they went through. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. If you think everything serving Jesus, that everything is going to be peaches, ices, and cream... You're only, that's heaven. That's up in heaven. But here, you need him. You need him. You can't afford to have one step away from him. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Are you here? Amen. Look at that. Look at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Well, now reading the Bible, you would think that's error. But he was prosperous in his attitude toward God. He was prospering in his body. He was prospering right where God wanted him to be. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. 
And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. What's our text? Bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto how many things? All things. God is blessing the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. God will bless people because of you. Amen. Amen. In other words, Joseph's being blessed right where he's at because he continues to serve the living God. Our God's not dead, but there's a lot of Christians that think that serve him like he's dead. If you really believe that God is with you and that he is the living God, you will serve him every fiber of your being. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some people say they serve the Lord or they love the Lord, but their life doesn't show that they serve him. Yeah, but this happened and I'm disappointed in God. Well, maybe you're going through a test. Amen. Did you know Job was tested? Amen. God was bragging on Job. There's not one like him in all the earth. But what did the devil say? That's because you blessed him. You've got a hedge around him. Remove your hedge and he will curse you. Job, the Bible says Job did not sin. Everything was taken from him, Eric. His children, no, hold on. We're talking about godliness is profitable. But Job was being tested. Everything was taken from him. But in the end, God blessed him with more than he had. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody says, yes, but what about I die this way? I'd rather die in faith than I would any other way. Amen. Amen. My next breath is up in the paradise of God. Amen. Woo, glory to God. I'm getting happy. Hallelujah. Well, just to show you his heart, be not weary and well-doing. Promotion's coming to you if you have just not faked. Look at verse 9 of Genesis 39. You see what's happening here if you read all this. Potiphar's wife seduced Joseph, trying to. He said, well, let's just read. Let me just, let's just read verse 5. Let's just pick back up. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Did you know he could? The, ma the master of the house is gone. They're in secret. But he knew God was watching. But he refused. Look at this. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanteth not what is with me in the house. In other words, does not withhold anything. And he hath committed all that he has in my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Wow, that's what Joseph's telling the wife. Neither has he kept back anything from me, look at this, but you. Because thou art his wife. Look what Joseph said. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Now, Joseph knew that adultery was sin back in his day. Amen. This man was serving the Lord. And all of a sudden, 
the woman of the house tried to lie with me. She said, lie with me. Joseph said, not so. How can I sin against my God? Godliness. Now look, listen. Now you're going to think what I'm fixing to share with you that it didn't pay off, but it does. He becomes second in command in the whole land of Egypt. Thirteen years being sold into slavery, lied about, because Potiphar's wife lies on him. And so Potiphar puts him in prison. Yeah, Brother Dennis, you said serving Jesus pays off the Bible. No, I said the Bible says godliness is profitable. Amen. Unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So now Joseph is lied on. Potiphar's wife lied and said he tried to lie with me. But it was the other way around. When he refused, she got mad. So her husband threw him in prison. But you know what happened? God blessed the prison because of Joseph. Look, so we're going to jump ahead. Joseph's in prison now. Have you been in prison? Some might have. He goes from leaving his family to being in Potiphar's house. Now he's lied on and now he's thrust in prison. You know God's still with him? Because yeah. God's fixing to promote this young man at the age of 30 over the whole land of Egypt. Yeah. From the Listen, from the prison to the palace. You know why? Because he served God. With an excellent spirit. Look at verse 14. Pharaoh dreams some dreams, and no one could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. But a word got back to Pharaoh, the baker and the butler. So we look here at verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily, look, out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his clothing with raiment and came in to Pharaoh. Here's a young man that's from the dungeon that's before the king of Egypt. You know who orchestrated it? God. You know who's going to orchestrate your life when you serve him in the spirit of excellence? God. Somebody says, I just don't want to give all my life to Jesus. Why not? Daddy. Look at verse 38 of chapter 41. We're skipping. But Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, look at this, For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Look at this. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. What? Look. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have sent thee over, the, over all the land of Egypt. But we really know who did it. Amen. God did. God wants to set you in some places but he wants you to have the spirit that Joseph had. In order for him to do it, he wants you to serve him in godliness. Joseph wouldn't sin in secret. Joseph could have lied with Potiphar's wife. But he said this is a great sin. Amen. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, verse 42, and put it upon Joseph's hand. 
and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck from the dungeon to the palace. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow on the knee! And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Now do you understand why it is how it paid that first Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 is so real now? For bodily exercise profiteth little. Yes, if you can work your body out and, be, and, and get exercise, do it. But it only profits you physically. Yeah. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. God will bless you in this life and in the life to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't have all the answers. And don't claim to. The one answer that I do have for you is Jesus. He is the answer to everything. He's the answer to everything. No man can save you or deliver you out of the lion's den. You might be facing a lion's den right now. I don't know where you're at. Spiritually, physically, mentally, or where you're at in life right now. I don't know the circumstances that surround you or what you're going through, but there is one that does. And he's able and he's willing to deliver you out of the lion's den. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ loves you very deeply. That he hung between heaven and earth for you. He came. Jesus said, no man takes my life. I give it. Yes. And let me say this. He is the Lord of hosts. Yes. He could have called down angels. And there's no doubt those angels wanted to come at his rescue. Because he is the Lord of hosts. He said, no man takes my life. I give it. Jesus gave his life for you. And we ought to give our lives to him. Amen. Nothing really matters upon the earth except him and his work. And if you will serve him, he will make life so pleasant and beautiful for you. Amen. But you have to give all to him. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Isn't the Lord wonderful?